Good morning, you guys. Today is day 50. It is March 23rd, 2023, and it is coming up on 9 a.m. All right, you guys, so we have several things to discuss today. Let's start with getting the treadmill going. and I will get it all mixed up and then it won't be correct. Okay, so I'm gonna to talk to you guys just for a couple of minutes about live streaming. Now, I have not went live yet and you guys, I started off looking on Google and searching for videos on YouTube and what I mainly found was how to go live. That part was kind of pretty self-explanatory, but that's not what I was looking for. What I was looking for was what are the requirements to be able to go live. So one of the first things that I found said that you had to, let's see, which one do I want to mention first? Okay, we'll start with that. It said that you had to have at least 50 subscribers, okay, five zero. And I thought, okay, I'm not there yet. That's probably why I can't go live yet on my phone because of that reason. And remember there's go live together and that is something that's new. At least on my YouTube app, it says that it is new. Okay, so I thought, all right, when I get there, then I'll be able to go live on my phone. And supposedly I can go live on my computer or laptop. But I never, you know, I never tried, right? Okay, so yesterday I said, you know what? You have 50 subscribers now, and I don't remember if I've clicked go live before this. Okay, but now that I have 50 subscribers, I thought go to your channel and click create and click go live and see what happens. Okay, because according to what you read online, you're supposed to be able to go live on your camera or your laptop even before you have 50 subscribers. So let's see what happens now that you do. Well, you guys, it came up with this message and it said, you have requested to go live. It gave the date and the time of the current day and time. And then it said, you will be able to within, and it had a clock that was counting down from 24 hours, go live and then live stream once that time period has passed. Now, I did read about the 24 hours. Somewhere in Google, or maybe I clicked learn more on something else, like from the Google search, okay? I don't think it was from my actual, I would say, a channel. Okay, so yesterday, that's what happened. It gave me that message. And so, if you see that message, there's a big blue box with white writing that says learn more. And I clicked on that. And I really didn't kind of all piece it together until just now right before I came out. Okay, so when you click learn more, it will tell you that you cannot have any live streaming restrictions within the past 90 days. Okay, I thought pretty simple. And then also, it said that you have to verify your account. And then underneath that, it gives you steps on how to do this. Okay, so it tells you to go to your channel, click create, go live, 
verify your channel. If you haven't already, okay, it'll walk you through the steps. And then it said that you probably won't be able to go live until 24 hours has passed. Now, here's the thing. My channel was already verified. That's, I would say, once I was able to do that, that's one of the first things that I did. Okay, so that message that I saw, you will only see that if you have already verified your channel. Okay, so how do you do that? You go to now what's called the earn page. Okay, that used to be the monetization page in your YouTube studio. And underneath number two, because there's three steps to apply to be a YouTube partner, okay, within the program, the YPP. Step one is to get a certain amount of watch hours or now to get a certain amount of views on your shorts. Step two is the verification process. Okay, and also you have to have the green check mark that says that you don't have any restrictions on your page. And then, or I guess you could say your channel. There's a little circle with a little eye in it. And if you hover over that, or actually if you click on it, it will tell you what restrictions you can have that will not affect you to apply to be monetized and what restrictions will, okay? And then it'll tell you like what you have to do about those restrictions basically. Either wait for them to fall off or wait for them to be removed, okay? And then you can apply. So that's kind of a, a base of what you'll see, but there is more information if you click on that little eye. So, um, I don't know. If you're not already verified, and the verification, that first little green check mark that you need, it's just, I think, putting in like your phone number or something like that. I don't remember, but I think I read something like that. And I kind of remember doing something like that, but like I said, I did it so early on. That's the only thing I can tell you, is I think you get sent, I don't know, a text message or you receive a phone call, maybe with a code or something, and then you put it in and then like it verifies your channel. Okay, so um, I believe, like I said, you can do it from the earn page. And I think that when I did it, it said monetization for that page in the YouTube studio. Okay, so the thing is, is that on my phone, I thought, okay, I have 50 subscribers. My channel is verified, I know this. And like I said, I would push go live and then it would tell me that I didn't meet the new requirements and it had like this little paragraph, this little message. So I assumed that that 24 hours that had to pass after you got the 50 subscribers, I assumed that after that passed, I would be able to go. So the next day came, nothing, it still didn't work, even go live together. The next day came, because I've had 50 subscribers for about maybe two, three days now. I think today will make day three. And uh, still, nothing. Okay, so it just so happens that I thought, well, from what I read, I can go live on my computer and I just want to see what pops up. I'm not gonna actually do it. And then come to find out that you have to start the process from your computer or possibly your laptop. Your laptop might work as well. Okay, so like I said, so you go to your channel, click create, click go live, and if you've already verified your channel, then it will start a clock and tell you. So right now, I have, I think it's a little less, or I should say a little bit more than 16 hours, and then it says that I can do live streaming or go live instantly. And I'm assuming this will trigger it working on my phone as well. That's my assumption. I will not know until later on this afternoon. Okay, so I'll have to give you an update on that in tomorrow's walk. All right, so um, we will go into the flight. So I told you guys that we had a straight three hour flight from Edmonton uh, back to the airport that we needed to be at to drive home. And you guys, this was really funny. Okay, so I don't have to fly. I'm afraid of heights. How I can get up in an airplane, I don't know. I mean, once you're up there, you're kind of stuck, right, obviously. I mean, you can't just open the door and fly away, everyone else is fine. You know, no one's gonna get sucked out of there because you open the door, you, you can't do that, right? So once you're up there, for me, 
personally, I'm like, why did I do this to myself? Um, it's not that I hadn't flown before, I just didn't plan on doing it again. And then I always heard like, oh, you really don't want to be on a small plane when it hits turbulence. Oh no, mm -mm. you would probably rather be on a big plane and the bigger the plane is, the less of it you should end up feeling. Should, okay. So that was kind of like the experiences that other people had that told me that had flown before. So this was a smooth flight. It was so pretty outside. It was sunny, and I'm talking about the whole three hours, nonstop. And I was like, I'm loving this. And um, my husband likes to give me the window seat. And I don't know why. And even though I'm scared, I still look out because I'm thinking, wow, this is amazing. I'm above the clouds. And I don't know if you've ever been up this high in an airplane, you guys, but, and I'm gonna sound for people that have never seen this before, like I'm crazy and I've lost my mind, but I haven't. There are a second set of clouds above the clouds that we can see. Okay. Um, sometimes you fly in between those sets of clouds. Sometimes you're up high enough to where you actually are flying above the other layer. And you guys, they're not that close together. Okay, so um, yeah, <laughs> I've been up that high before. And uh, I can't tell you how high that is. I can just tell you, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even wanna give you a range, but it's thousands and thousands of feet, okay? I can just tell you that. I don't even know what to say, 30, 40, I have no clue. I just know what I've seen, and I've seen it multiple times because the first time I thought that I was seeing things. Um, we had to go up higher, and that's when I saw that we were going through the second set of clouds, the ones that's higher up, so yeah. But we actually were able to fly, I guess you can say, in between them. So we were above, like I said, the set of clouds that you see if there's any in the sky from the ground. And so I fell asleep. I don't know how long I was asleep, but I woke up and you guys, I forgot that we were flying. That's how smooth the ride was. So the first thing I did, you know, you kind of yawn, stretch, right? I looked out the window and I jumped back and I told my husband, because I think he was awake. I said, I forgot that we were flying. I thought, what are we doing up in the air? And it scared the mess out of me, right? Okay, so. Um, I went back to sleep, you guys, and that happened again. Okay, so I think after the first time, or especially, I know, especially after the second time, I was mad. Because, you know, you always hear things like, oh, oh face your fears. I'm not suggesting that you do that. I don't care what your fear is. Um, I would say if you're like me, which is, that's not a good idea. Because you know what you're scared of, right? And you know whether or not that's going to go away or not. Okay, so I'm just not that risk taker. I'm like, that's not gonna stop me from being scared of whatever I'm scared of. Depending on how scared I am of it, that'll probably make me worse, right? So I was mad because I thought, I don't wanna be scared of flying because sometimes you have to fly, especially if you're gonna go overseas. So I don't know you guys, it's not something that's gonna go away. I'm quite certain there will not be an age where I don't feel that. Okay, one minute I'm fine, and if we hit turbulence, that's it. Okay, and then when it stops, I'm okay. And I'm sure that this, you know, applies to a lot of people. I mean, obviously, you know, but there are some people where the turbulence doesn't bother them, it doesn't really matter how bad it gets. Or maybe it's the fact that it hasn't gotten bad enough. Um, but yeah, you guys, because oh my gosh, I'll just say this, flying to Vegas, in November, mm -mm. no, I don't like that. The last 30 minutes before you get in, or last I'll say maybe 40 minutes, um, I remember one time, it was like, let's say you're watching a movie, let's say like Toy Story, and one of the little kids is like playing with their airplanes and they're doing this. That's what it was like. Um, just as fast as the flight attendants came through with the drinks, they turned right back around, picked them all up, and sat down, and they didn't get up for the rest of the flight. You guys, I was so scared that I was like, you know what? I told my husband, um, I think I'm gonna drive home. 
I know that that's a waste of a ticket because, as you know, when you put the Tremorne round trip, you still buy two separate tickets, but you just buy them at the same time. Okay, so, yeah, I was convinced. No, 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 because we were going to be there for a week, and I was just like, mm -mm. I'm pretty certain I'm going to drive home. And I thought, well, let me see how I feel later on in the week, but at that moment for the first couple of days, I was pretty sure I was getting a rental. Yeah. So, me and Flying, no, are not friends. I know a lot of people that don't mind it, but I can't. I'm just like, oh, no, no. I can do it, but I'm scared. I can't get rid of that fear. It doesn't stop. Okay, so time check first, 14 minutes and 50 seconds. All right, so I thought about it. And I was thinking, I mentioned some of my first. My first car, my first apartment, and I even went, I wanna say a little bit big into the second one. And I thought, I've never talked about the first time that I flew. So I said, well, this is perfect. You're gonna talk about that flight anyway because even though you got scared twice, you thought it was funny that you woke up and forgot that you were in an airplane. Okay, so let's go along with flights and I'll tell you, like this is the very first time that I flew. Okay, so I was coming back from South Carolina and my friend's parents were nice enough to get me an airplane ticket because if not, at the time I lived in California and it was a two day, 10 hour bus ride, okay, to go back. And that was how I got out there, okay? So um, my friend actually rode the bus all the way from out there so that I wouldn't have to ride the bus out there to go visit him and his family. And I thought that was really nice. But you guys, um, the fact that they did that for me, I thought that's crazy. And I've never flown before. Okay, so they said that the flight was six hours. Um, I thought it was a complete six hours, non-stop. Okay, so I didn't know that it wasn't. I think that the first, I want to say the first flight was like, four, maybe five hours, and then the last flight wasn't, or maybe vice versa, because the first plane I got on was small. Okay, so um, I can't remember. I just know it was like, let's say, four and two, or flip-flop that, two and four, or something like that. Okay, how it was broken up between the second and the first flight. Now, I had never been through TSA either, obviously, because I had never flown. And I've heard a lot of people talk about it and how they don't like it. Okay, so the airport was huge. I think even the airport I connected in was big. And um, we went through, and it was really, really weird. Okay, so I don't know exactly how to explain this because usually there's like a little conveyor belt and you put your stuff on it, right? And it goes through a machine. And then you walk through like a metal thingy, right? Well, that kind of wasn't there. Picture the machine that your stuff goes through kind of without that long, long conveyor belt. So I'm not saying that there wasn't a conveyor belt though, but it wasn't that long. And then of course, the lady, she, I don't know. I think they just, they deal with all types of situations. So I can only imagine, you know, why she was like this. She was very serious. So, I didn't know, so she tells me, take off your shoes. And, okay, take off your belt. Okay, and uh, lay this over here. I don't know if they were going through bags or not. I just remember seeing someone's suitcase open. And they didn't find anything, but I, I remember it for some reason being open and, and them not closing it back. I think he had to. And so there, I remember there was a guy behind me and I thought she told me to take off something else too, right? Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was my jacket because this was around Christmas time. Okay, so it might have been my jacket as well. And so I said, I don't know if I said it to her or the guy behind me, I think I said to the guy behind me, I was like, man, I looked back at him 
and you know, he had a suit tie, everything like that, right? And of course, jacket tie, all this stuff, right? And he's taking himself off, he's supposed to have shoes, belt, all that stuff. I said, if she asked me to take off one more thing, it's gonna be like I'm performing a strip tease. You know, <laughs> or that we're performing a strip tease, and he fell out laughing, you guys. When I look back at this lady, she had the straightest face ever. Like, she didn't find that funny at all. And I was thinking, that was funny, you know? So I thought, okay, well, they're very serious about security, whatever, I don't know. Maybe that's just how she is, I have no clue. But I would assume it's just what she goes through on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Um, there's no telling. So I thought, all right, so I'm just gonna do what she says, because obviously um, she's not having it, right? So I go ahead and now, Put it back in the shoes, put it back in the belt, put it back on my coat. And um, I believe this was this hat to have been the flight where I had a lot of luggage. I did. Okay, so I'm talking about like I at least had two check bags, and I may actually have had. And I don't know how I would have done this, but two carry-ons or something. I'm remembering two carry-ons, small ones that could roll. Okay, so I don't know. I don't think I had a backpack that had wheels. I, I don't know how to find it, but maybe it was the fact that I have had a carry-on. And I'm remembering, on top of all this, you guys, I had a duffel bag too. Okay, so like I said, I don't know how, but I want to say that I actually have five pieces of luggage total. So... Walking, 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 right? And I remember it. And um, it's so funny because <laughs> one of the first movies I thought about was Home Alone. And, uh, you know, looking at the terminals, where's the gate, like where your flight is, where you go, stuff like that, right? So besides that, seeing it a little bit here and there on TV, um, I had a little bit of a general knowledge of how to do this. So we're walking and... Uh, I don't know if this was to get to the first airplane or the second. All I remember is that at some point, either before the first flight or in between the first and the second one, they changed our gate. I don't remember what state I was in. I just know the airport is huge. It's, it's big. You guys, we didn't even know each other. And I thought back to Home Alone because now we were running. We were actually helping each other with our luggage because we had to run like all the way to the other side of the airport. Luckily, they knew where they were going and we were on the same flight. Okay, so me and just some random people. And then, I mean, it was like six of us running just fine. And I pictured, the other thing I pictured was Scooby-Doo. Like when they're running from something, <laughs> you guys, we were flying through the airport, okay? Um, yeah, we were footing it. So I remember we got there and uh, we made it. Yeah, just in time. I'm telling you guys, just in time we did, we made it. Um, because I believe they had started calling to board, like literally like five to 10 minutes after that. So um, I'm just happy that we all worked together. So I was like, oh wow, you know, it's so nice that just random people will just pull together like that. And uh, you would have thought that we were traveling together at that point. So I do remember, like I said, I want to say that the first plane was small. So we go and we drive out. Now, I don't know if it's called taxi when you are going to fly out to go down the runway or if it's only called taxi or being taxied or whatever when you land. Okay, so I'll just say that the pilot drove out to the runway. And um, I was thinking, okay, so I think airplanes have to get up to, was it 75 miles per hour? You're probably thinking it was faster to be able to lift off the, the, the um, ground and some of you know, stuff that I've learned. So then we make that final turn. And now we're facing the runway that we're gonna go down, right? And that's when I realized that all that time, obviously we never took off until uh, this moment. And so that's when I realized that all that time we were just going just to get to the runway, okay? Um, because I kept noticing, obviously, that we were still on the ground. So like I said, plane makes the final turn, it stops. And then you guys, 
it just took off. And it took off so fast that it threw me back in my seat. And I was like, this is so cool, right? I'm young, I'm like early 20s. I don't think I was older than 21. I, I want to say I was younger than that, but I remember, I remember being at least 20. So I'm smiling, and now as if I'm going to be able to get the smile off my face because the force is pushing me back into the seat. So my smile is like permanently there, right? And then we just, we go up. And I was like, wow, that was so cool. So finally, we land. And this may actually have been like the four hour flight that I told you guys first. So I think that happened, so we landed. And so, obviously, I'm fully aware, we're not at LAX, right? And I thought, oh, okay. When they told me, my friend's parents, that the flight was six hours, it was not nonstop. I have a connecting flight. Okay, so that might be where that story came into place where we were literally running through the airport like a scene from Home Alone or scooby -Doo. And so the next plane I get on is bigger. Okay, so we're flying, flying, flying. We only have like, what, a couple of hours to get to LAX. And you guys, I don't know if I want to call it the arch, the dome, something. There's like arch or something, right? And you can see it. So you know when you can actually see LAX before you're going to land, right? And I'm talking about from some ways back because you're up high. And I think you can see where it says LAX for the airport. And so we hit turbulence. Mind you, my first time flying, right? And I was thinking, okay, the seats turn into uh, flotation devices. That's not going to help. We're not over water. I'm literally, or we are literally, because we're all on this plane, we're, we're in this together, okay? We're literally 30 minutes away from home, or at least from maybe our next connecting flight, or maybe get to catch the bus or a taxi somewhere, and we're all about to die, right? And I was just like, I cannot believe this. And that's when I started thinking, you know, of myself personally, was like, I'm 30 minutes away from home and I'm not gonna make it. This plane is not gonna make it. And so I'm scared. Now, I don't think I was as scared as I get now. I just know I was scared. So the plane lands. And of course I'm like, okay, we're on the ground. Okay, because still not really a guarantee that nothing's gonna happen until all three of them wheels, or actually I think the back have two and two, so all five of the wheels touch on the runway, right? So like I said, we land, and then we're, I think this thing is called, like I said, taxi, like we're going over to the, the part where you can get off. Now, I have to get on my luggage. So, never have been to a luggage claim. I don't think, at least, obviously not for myself. We, I don't know. In the course period of living in that general area or driving to, I may actually have went with someone else to pick someone else up from LAX, okay? So, I don't think it wasn't that I had been to the airport before, but I'd never been there for a flight. Okay, so, I get on my luggage and I go to go out, okay? So like I said, I live in California, so I still have to get back to Mexico. So I still have about a two and a half, maybe three hour bus ride, right? And they told me the airport buses don't stop. They go straight through. So it's gonna not take that long. Because I'm gonna tell you guys, I think by that time I already rode Greyhound or something like that from like the LA area kinda and uh, to home. And so I kind of already knew that it takes longer than that. So I was surprised. I was like, two, two and a half to three hours. No. And they said, no, that's because you don't have to stop. So I was like, oh, okay. And I think they said the airport buses were bigger than like Greyhound Orange Go, and so it would be like a really, really nice ride. And I was like, oh, okay. And this was different things I was hearing even before I left Big Soap, right? Um, because of course, I had to take the airport bus. I actually take, it was either Greyhound or Orange Go, I think, to get to LAX. Okay, so no one drove me. That's how I got there from Bakersfield. So there's this guy, and I'm not going to lie, you guys, he looked like the human version of Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. This is the first time in my life that I ever saw somebody that I would have thought that that's what they drew the character from. 
haircut, everything. Young kid, skinny, I mean, looked just like him. Except for, of course, he wasn't a cartoon. He's by himself, I'm by myself. Now, I really didn't want to mention this, but this was after, um, well, I guess I will, because it's a part of the story. This was after 9 11. Okay, so um, I wasn't thinking about that so far as this was after, because this was, this was literally like, I don't know, I would say a year or two, I don't know, something after, okay? It wasn't like two to three months ago. Um, or else I would have thought about that. I mean, that was tragic, right? So, yeah, um, it was it was some time. At least a good year, two years, three, maybe, maybe even four. So it didn't even cross my mind. And so he says, okay, can I see your ID or driver's license? And... I said, you need to see my ID and driver's license to go out of the airport. He was like, yes. Mind you, the doors to go out of the airport are in sight. Like, I can see them. Okay? And um, he had already told me where to go to get the airport bus to go back to Bakersfield. Okay, my stuff is heavy. I just want to go get on this bus and go home. And I don't want to miss the bus. Because I don't know if one cycle through every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes or something, but... Um, it might have been every 30 minutes, maybe every hour, okay? So I could not miss this bus. And so he said, yes, I'm so sorry. And then he said, you know, because of the whole um, thing that happened. And he didn't have to say it because at that time, once the way he said it, I knew what he was about to say. And I said, oh, yeah, yeah. I said, you know what? I didn't even think about that. And um, I was even thinking back to just, this is my first time flying. And no one told me not to have solid colored luggage, okay, especially black. Black, I don't want to say now, but back then was honestly like the most common color of luggage. And um, I had a, a matching set and there was nothing but maybe the name, and even I think the name was like stitched in black, right? So, yes, no one warned me, don't do that. If you get black luggage, make sure it has like a red trim, a green trim, I don't know, even a black leather trim, or maybe even like the tan, or what's that color, cognac or whatever, something, something to make this stand out, lime green or something, or just pick something that you can see. Because I was trying to decide between did I want the luggage that was made out of material, or did I want the hard cover luggage? Because my thing about the hardcover luggage is that usually there's no pockets on the outside. Now I like pockets on the outside. So, yeah, that's the other thing I thought back to, like, man, when I told him, I'm so sorry, I'm tired, I'm looking for my ID, right? I do have it, obviously. I got into the airport, so I do have it. Or got on the plane. So, um, I can't find it. I'm looking. And I even have a purse as well, okay? So I'm just like, oh my gosh, I said, just, just give me a second, I'm so sorry. And I, and I said, I did one more time, I think I said, you really do have to ID me for me to walk out those doors that we both can see from here. And he was like, yes, I'm really, really sorry. And I said, okay. So I'm not trying to give you a hard time. It's just that I've never heard of having to ID yourself to leave the airport, only to port planes, right? So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm looking all over, pockets here, pockets there. And at this point, it's a downfall with it. Like on my jackets, I like to have a lot of pockets as well. I really don't like carrying purses or backpacks or anything. Backpacks are a little bit better because your hands are free. But at the same time, if I could just walk around with all pockets, I would. You know, if it wasn't for like the weight and stuff like that. So um, I'm still looking. And like I said, I'm thinking, dude, man, like he doesn't even know what I went through to get my luggage off that belt thingy because my luggage looked like everyone else's. And that last piece of luggage, um, it took me about 10 minutes to recognize my luggage. That's how many people were on the flight. So I was like, I was one of the last people to actually get it. And I think it was just the fact that it came down kind of last, it must have got separated from my luggage, the rest of it, right? So I'm thinking he has no clue. And I thought, how do you think he feels? Because he has to tell this to every person that walks up to him. And so now you guys, Okay, we'll do a time check. 33 minutes and 16 seconds. 
Now I turn around, there's a line of about, I kid you not, if I were to tell you 60 to 70 people were now behind you guys, that's not an over-exaggeration. People with their kids and, you know, um, elderly people, just people just there. All their luggage sitting on the floor because they're waiting for me to find my ID. And like I said, I started off when I started looking for it with no one behind me whatsoever. I don't even know how I didn't hear the people walk up because I have pretty good hearing. And so, of course, they're frustrated, they're tired, and I think I start apologizing to you guys, I'm so sorry, but we have to, he needs my ID. And I think I even said to leave the airport, like, like to kind of emphasize and I'm like, um, yeah, you hear this? Like, I know he's serious, but um, I'm just thinking in my head, right? Finally, I'm outside the doors. Okay, I found it, like I said, showed it to him. And so I said, okay, he said, go over here. Now, because I had to put everything down to get my hands free to look for it, I had to rearrange everything. Some of it rolled, and let me tell you, I made the mistake of getting a luggage set where the most wheels that were on the luggage was two. And then, you know, in the back it has the, the two stands. Mm -mm. That is not a good idea. No, 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 no. Since then, I have tried four wheels. I now go for eight. Okay, so whether it's a hard shell, whether it's just regular material, it has to have eight wheels for me. It has to be able to do that 360 swivel. Okay, um, no. I am a little bit of a seasoned traveler now, and it's just, mm -mm. if you're finding that you're having trouble with that, because what's the first thing they do with two wheels? They fall over, right? Usually they fall forward. And obviously, you might have something in there that gets, gets smashed or get broken, especially if you're like me, and say, you know what, no, 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 souvenirs are coming on the plane with me. And a pair of clothes, right, for an emergency. So, yeah, it was this fall over. Okay, I got this, got that, that one fell. This one, that one, that one fell, the duffel bag fell off. I was so, so frustrated. I'm trying to tell you guys, um, my duffel bag was heavy. It didn't have wheels. Mm -mm, big mistake. I now have a rule. Duffel bag has to have wheels. Yes, has to, it's a must. I might even get to the point where my backpack has to have wheels if I didn't have like nice backpacks with a nice back padding and the padding not just in the straps. But yeah, um, so I've learned. It needs to be as convenient as possible. Okay, um, because if I'm gonna bring some stuff back, I'm gonna pack not heavy, but I will have that maybe extra case for stuff like that if I'm willing to let it go into the check back. So, um, yeah, like I said, first time flying, first time, first luggage that didn't know any of this. So, finally the airport bus comes, and I'm so happy that they helped you put your stuff underneath the bus. I mean, because now I can barely like lift it even though it can kind of like partially roll, I have like no energy left. Okay, so all the stuff that can go on the bus with me, I take it on, I get on the bus, and yeah, I rode on the airport bus for the first time, and that was actually, like I said, the first time that I've been on a bus that did not stop anywhere except for your final destination. Okay, and so I thought, that was really a nice ride. It gave me time to just kind of, just take a deep breath and, and just sit there. Okay, um, I believe my mom came to pick me up from the bus station. And I wanna say, I could be wrong, but back then, that Greyhound, Orange Belt, and the airport bus all stopped at the Greyhound station. Okay, so I do remember her picking me up and she was like, oh, you know, how was your flight? Because she didn't know. As a matter of fact, I don't think she knew that I didn't ride the bus all the way back. Unless I, I might have called her and told her in advance, hey, mom, can you come pick me up? And I think I did, I must have told her. 
you gotta fly first and then catch the bus. And so that was my first time flying. I ended up on two planes. Like I said, that was my first time going through TSA. My first time picking luggage. Um, that was a lot of first for that trip. And I was gone for, I want to say, maybe two weeks. Okay, I remember it being like Christmas vacation for the kids that were still in school. You know, for some places, well, at least in California, they get out like two and a half weeks or something like that. I think even now it's about that long. It's almost three weeks. And so I think I was gone for the majority of that. Um, I wanted to make this trip last. I had never been to the East Coast. I had never been to um, South Carolina or any, really not, I think, by any state over there. So I guess that was part of my first as well. And then we almost made it on the freeway, highway, whatever they would call it, from South Carolina to North Carolina. But it starts to get dark, and it was raining, different things like that, you know, throughout the different days. Like I said, this was in um, December. And so we had to get off the freeway and turn around and actually go back to South Carolina. So I never got to see North Carolina. Um, but yes, all right. We are finished. We just have, hold up, I will say a couple more seconds. Okay, so I'll do distance first, and then calories, and then by that time we should be at 40 minutes. So my distance is 2.6, my calories is 182, and I don't think I can get a pulse reading in time, and as you know, I get shocked anyway, so I don't really like to touch this part, especially this one. Okay, so I'm not gonna do my pulse today either. Um, we are now, we're almost there. Okay, countdown, three, two, one. 40 minutes exactly. Let's stop this because as usual, I have some things that I need to do and I actually have to get cleaned up to do them. So I didn't get in this house and uh, I'm not in as much of a hurry as I was yesterday. You guys, I mean, I literally hopped off before I turned it off, right? Um, I will see you guys tomorrow. And like I said, the information I gave you about the live stream, I hope that helped if you are just starting off on YouTube like I am. Okay. I know I've been around for about a little over a year, but in comparison to how long some of you have been creating content on YouTube or creating content and uploading to YouTube, um, I'm new. Okay, um, it's an experience, I can tell you. Like I said, I did not start this channel to become monetized, and now it looks like I might be able to, except for the subscribers, I don't know. I won't say I'll never get to a thousand subscribers, but I think I'm gonna reach my watch hours and then maybe second my shorts views before I even get enough subscribers. So we'll see. We'll see what happens because the next part of it is what happens afterwards once you get approved. Okay, so that will be for later, way, way, way later, because like I said, I'm at 50. But I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to get this jacket off because it's hot. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.